Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with my favorite smartphones. So I get asked about this all the time. People want to know, is the HTC One better than the Galaxy S4? Why should they switch from an iPhone? What has the best camera? Etc, etc, etc. And while for 100% sure there is no such thing as a perfect phone, what might be great for me might be terrible for you, but overall there are a lot of phones that are actually really, really good. To start with, we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Now the first thing you've got to know about this phone is that it is massive. I can't tell you how many times people came up to me in public and asked, is that an actual phone? Now the thing is, yes it is big. It does have a 5.5 inch screen, which is much much bigger than even something like a Galaxy S4 or an HTC One, and way way bigger than anything on the iPhone. However, there are advantages to having a really big screen. For starters, of course, you have a lot more screen real estate for movies and music and productivity, all that kind of stuff. It is kind of nice being able to watch, for example, a YouTube video on that massive screen. The main reason it's on this list, though, is because of the battery life. Put simply, it is absolutely awesome and probably one of the best phones I've ever tested. So even under the longest days where I'm just constantly on the phone, taking pictures, tweeting, going to email, even playing games, I still was never able to actually kill the Note 2 in a single day. Now that is not something I've been able to say about any other phone out there. So if you really need a phone that not only has a nice big screen, but also has a massive battery that can last you easily through a full day of use, definitely check out the Galaxy Note 2. Next up, we have the LG Nexus 4. Now this is another phone that I reviewed late last year, and in fact if you want any more information about any of the phones I'm talking about, I've done more in-depth videos on them all, so you can check out the annotations as well as the links in the description. Uh, but the Nexus 4 is kind of special for a couple reasons. For starters, since it is a Nexus device, that means that it gets all of its updates straight from Google. Now that means a couple things. For starters, you're going to be using pure, unscanned version of Android, which means that you don't have to worry about having like some kind of iffy skin, which can definitely come on some of these phones, as well as you're going to be getting updates straight from Google, so you're always going to be on the cutting edge of Android. On top of that, it's actually a very cheap phone, so you can actually pick it up for only $300 off contract. Now compare that to something like the Galaxy S4, which is over double the price off contract, and the Nexus 4 is a really, really solid deal. Next up, we have the Apple iPhone 5. Now Apple's always done a fantastic job of making phones. I mean, obviously the iPhone is pretty popular if you hadn't noticed, and the iPhone 5 is no exception. So for starters, the design and build quality are absolutely top notch. I mean, just spend a couple minutes playing with the iPhone 5 and you'll feel just how nicely designed it is, the little tiny machined edges, the glass as well as the aluminum kind of all wrapped up together. It's actually a very nice phone to use and a very nice phone to actually hold. Although of course most people are probably just going to take this beautiful design, throw a $2 case on it and call it a day. But regardless, it's definitely very nicely designed. On top of that, it also does have other good features, including a very impressive camera, uh, not quite up to par with some of the other cameras that I'm going to be talking about in some of the other phones here in a minute, but still a very good 8 megapixel camera with both stills as well as video, and of course it is running iOS. So a lot of people use it, obviously, and for the most part it's a solid operating system. Sure, there are some issues here and there, and it is getting just a little bit outdated. However, iOS 7 should be coming out here very soon, and if the rumors are true, should actually be doing a lot to kind of improve the way that the iPhone looks and feels. So put all this together, and what you get is a very, very solid package. Moving on, we have the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now there are a couple reasons why you want to go with this over something else. So for starters, it is running the latest version of Android, but it does have TouchWiz on top, which adds tons of new features to the phone. So some of them are definitely gimmicky, however there are just so many different cool things that you can actually do with the phone, that more than likely there's at least a couple things that you'll be using yourself. So for example, you can actually take your hand and wave it over the screen without actually touching it to take a call, you can run multiple apps on the screen at one time, you can take pictures or video with both the rear and front facing camera at the same time, the list goes on and on and on. It also has an awesome looking 5 inch 1080p screen, however since it is made of plastic that does mean that it doesn't feel quite as nice as something like the HTC One or the iPhone 5. However on the flip side you can remove the back panel to swap out the battery as well as add a micro SD card. Now probably my favorite feature of the Galaxy S4 is actually the camera. It's got a 13 megapixel shooter and it takes awesome pictures. So for a phone especially, they're nice and rich and detailed, brings in lots of color, and there's even a decent amount of depth of field. So for a phone, it's really, really impressive. And overall, the Galaxy S4 as a phone is a very, very good choice for pretty much anybody. Last but not least, we have the HTC One. Now this is a fantastic Android smartphone. In fact, I liked it so much that I went out and bought myself one. 
So there are a few reasons why I'd recommend someone to pick up the HTC One. For starters, it has some fantastic build quality. So like I was saying with the iPhone 5, it's not a big deal if you just throw a case on your phone. However, of course, being able to be totally made out of aluminum definitely does help with drops and that kind of stuff. But for the most part, the HTC One just feels nice to hold. It's got a little bit of a contour on the back so it fits well in your hand. And because it is made out of metal, it really just does feel a little bit nicer than pretty much any other phone that I've ever tried. It's also got boom sound. Now I know that sounds like some really dumb marketing gimmick, but it actually is really legit. So basically what boom sound is, is a pair of front facing speakers on the obviously front of the phone. Now this makes a really big difference and actually surprisingly it's probably one of my favorite features of the phone, is it actually sounds good. It's loud enough to fill an entire room with some pretty decently loud music, as well as actually giving you some good bass. And of course with two speakers you actually get a little bit of a stereo effect, which is kind of nice for watching videos, especially movies and stuff. It actually sounds really impressive. The camera is also good. So it has a four ultra pixel camera, which basically are the same thing as normal megapixels. However, each pixel is just a little bit bigger, allowing it to pull in a lot more light. So thanks to that, as well as the optical image stabilization, again, a bunch of geeky jargon that you probably don't need to care about. But the main point is this thing takes some really nice lower light pictures. So of course that's always been a really big disadvantage of using a phone camera, is as soon as the lights go down and it kind of gets dark, it just takes awful pictures. However, the HTC One actually does a really good job of keeping up. Put it all together with what is probably the best screen on a phone out there, as well as cool little features like being able to actually control your TV straight from the phone. And overall, the HTC One is absolutely an awesome phone that I would really recommend to basically anybody. Honorable mentions go to the BlackBerry Z10, which while really doesn't quite match up to the phones I talked about here today, is still a pretty decent phone, especially if you're coming from a current BlackBerry, as well as the Nokia Lumia 920, which is a bit of a brick of a phone, I will give it that. However, if you do want to use Windows Phone, it's a pretty solid phone to go with, and it does have a fantastic 8 megapixel camera. So now it's your turn. If you're going to buy a smartphone today, and you had to use it over the next couple years, what would you pick? Definitely be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. If you guys are interested in more, I've created an entire playlist which goes over all the different phones that I talked about in this video. So of course, if you guys want more information on any of them, feel free to go check that out. Anyway, if you enjoyed, definitely be sure to leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time.